Hello, my name is Susan Winsberg and I'm co-principal flute and piccolo of the Los Angeles Symphonic Winds. If you were at the Stars of the LA Winds concert last season, you would have heard me perform the solo piece Sue's Night on the Town by composer Ross Wright. I am that Sue. In the same concert, you would have heard me recite the Robert Burns poem, Tam O'Shanter, in the original Scots dialect. And you might have wondered, how does she know how to do that? Well, that's because my mother was born and raised in Scotland, and she taught me how to speak Scots. Scots is actually a language. Scotland is considered trilingual. It's got English, Scots, and Gaelic, known as Gaelic, Scots Gaelic, as opposed to Irish Gaelic. Anyway, I'm also learning Scots Gaelic, a difficult language. I'm here today to tell you about Scottish and Irish culture and music, and to demonstrate some instruments for you, and explain what makes it sound the way it sounds, of course, we call it Celtic music. We use that umbrella term to include Scottish and Irish music. And I will give you some demonstrations today. The musical traditions of Scotland and Ireland are similar in some ways, but also very different. They have different types of tunes and different instruments that they play them on. Also different dance forms that go with the tunes. For example, a the Highland Pipes, the Scottish Highland Pipes, are the bagpipes that you're used to hearing at, uh, for example, parades and funerals and things like that. They're loud, they're meant to be played outdoors, they have a bag under one arm and the pipes go over the shoulder. Whereas the Irish Pipes are played sitting down, they, the pipes go down to the side, they have a bag on one arm, a uh, bellows on the other arm, and they have regulators and it's a very complicated wonderful instrument called the King of Instruments. It's, it's quite a haunting and unique instrument. But they're very different from the Highland Pipes. Both traditions use the fiddle quite a bit. So you have Scottish fiddling is a huge tradition, and Irish fiddling, different style, but same instrument. The Irish uh, tradition has the baram, the hand drum. This is uh, made with a goat skin, complete with fur. I'm actually trying to learn the instrument, but I'm not good enough to play you a rhythm yet, but I can tell you that it's actually a melodic instrument in a sense, because it has different tones. Uh, I use my hand in the back to create them. See? It has different tones. I play with a tipper. Ireland also has the harp. This is a Celtic harp or an Irish harp. Another instrument that I'm trying to learn. So much to learn, so little time. But it's also fascinating and exciting. Of course, I am a flutist by trade, a classical flutist. And um, this is my usual flute. It's silver uh, with a gold head joint. And uh, Scottish music, actually some of it, sounds okay on the flute. The songs, for example, of Robert Burns, like the, who wrote Tam O'Shanter, some of them sound okay on this flute. Um, I can give you an example of My Love is Like a Red Red Rose. Um, the, the tune that goes with the poem joint. When I do Celtic music, I like to use a wooden head joint because it's more rustic sounding. The head joint determines uh, much of the sound of the flute and so by changing the head joint I now have a softer, mellower sound that goes better with traditional music, I believe. 
especially boxwood, which is extra porous. So you'll hear the difference now if I do My Love is Like a Red Red Rose on this head joint. a softer sound. So now that was almost classical sounding, but um, a more typical Scottish melody would be um, the one that goes with the poem John Anderson, My Joe. It's like a piping march, and uh, there's a lot of marches in Scottish music. So um, uh, the poem that goes with the song is quite lovely and it's short, so I think I'll recite it for you, especially for the people who didn't get to hear Tam O'Shanter. <clears throat> it's about um, a couple growing old together and still being fond of each other in old age. And uh, the words, my Joe, means mean my dear, my beloved. And it's called John Anderson, my Joe. So it goes like this. John Anderson, my Joe, John. When we were first acquaint, your locks were like the raven your bonny brew was brent. But now your brew is bald, John. Your locks are like the snow. Blessings on your frosty pow, John Anderson, my Joe. John Anderson, my Joe, John, we clomb the hill together. And mony a canty day, John, we've had we gain another. No, we mon tutter doon, John. But hand in hand we'll go and sleep together at the fit. Joan Anderson, my Jo. That's the Scots language. Hard to understand, but awfully beautiful. And this is the melody that goes with it. <laughs> typical Scottish march and this is the instrument that I use for Celtic music unless I'm playing Irish tunes and the reason for that is that they don't work well with a keyed instrument because the ornaments need to be done with holes not keys and that's why I switch over to the Irish wooden flute now, the Irish wooden flute is really just a flute the way they were in the 1800s. This is a replica of a flute from around 1825. It's a beautiful instrument made out of coccus wood by Patrick Alwell, a famous flute builder. Uh, it does have a few keys on it that make it fully chromatic, but uh, I don't really use them, hardly ever. In fact, I turn the, this one key away so it won't get in my way because I'm just going to use the holes and that's because the Irish ornaments need the holes like I was saying for example you have the cut that's where you just cut the sound it's a quick little cut it's supposed to just sound like a, a blip and then you have something called the tip that's also just a percussive effect. You put them all together, you get a roll, which is principal note, cut, principal note, tip, and principal note. Kind of like a classical turn. Instead of hearing the tones, you actually just hear it as a percussive effect. Almost like a drum roll. So that's a typical Irish ornament.
Here's a tune that uses a lot of rolls, so you can hear what they sound like. It's called the Legacy Jig. <laughs> something called finger vibrato because in Irish music we don't use a regular classical vibrato like this. That's classical music. We use finger vibrato or no vibrato at all. Just straight. Um, so that was a jig. Jigs are in 6-8. Now reels are in 4-4. Four, four. This is a reel called Old Rainy Day. Also have um, multi-part jigs. I'll play my whistle for to to show you that. See all these whistles. The thing about whistles is you need one, you need many of them because each whistle only plays in four keys. It plays in two majors and their relative minors. For example, this is a D whistle. Um, so it's a D major scale. But it also has a flat 7, so I can get a G major scale. And then I can have B minor relative to D major. And E minor relative to G major. And this is a wooden whistle. Uh, and it's cylindrical bore. So whistles can be either conical bore, this is my favorite whistle of all, a Michael Copeland brass whistle with conical bore. And you can make them out of different materials, different woods, different metals, brass, aluminum. Uh, you can make them out of plastic and all different, uh, all, through, all different kinds of materials. It changes the sound and the timbre. But like I said, this Copeland is my favorite. So I'm going to play for you a multi-part jig. So it's still in 6-8, but it's got, this is a four-part jig called Langstrom Pony. And you can hear what the D whistle sounds like. up your heels and dancing? So that was a jig, a multi-part jig.
unlike legacy, which is just two parts. We also have what's called slip jigs. Slip jigs are in 9-8. For that, I will play my other wooden flute. This flute is made out of African blackwood, and it has more keys on it. It has the low keys. But like I said, I never play them, so I just roll them away. This is a slip jig called the butterfly, and you'll notice it's felt in three, so it's nine, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One of the most fun Irish tune forms is the polka, the Irish polka. I'll go back to my whistle for that. I have all these whistles, but I do have my favorite. Uh, this is called uh, the Bally Desmond polkas. Polkas are in 2 4 time. also have, I won't play all the types for you, but we have horn pipes. Those are in 4-4, four, four, but they're more lilting than a reel. We have slides. They're in 12-8. We have marches and waltzes. In Scotland, we have something called strathspeys. And um, just all these different tunes and rhythms. We also have something called the air. Now, an air doesn't have, uh, well, there are airs that have no rhythm whatsoever, no meter, they're completely free. That's called the Sean Nose style, meaning the old style. And, um, and then we have ones that have a little lilt to them. So for that, I'll pull out an, a low whistle. I have whistles in all different keys. I don't have them all, but I have a lot. I have uh, low G, low F, couple low D's. I'll just show you what the low D sounds like. It's quite a different sound. Here I have to play with flat fingers because the holes are very far apart. Isn't that a beautiful sound? That's a low D whistle. I have low Fs and Cs and B flats, many different ones. For this, I'm going to play the low A. And I'll play an air for you that you'll probably recognize because it's not actually a traditional air. It's a composed air.
that? That's from the Titanic. And then for an air that has rhythm but is slow, I'm going to play something written by Turlock O'Carolan, who is a very famous figure in Irish history, he lived in the uh, 1700s, and he was a blind harper. Now, uh, a person who plays the Celtic harp is not a harpist, it's a harper. And he was a blind harper who traveled the countryside and took the news of the day to distant locations and played for his supper and wrote compositions for wealthy patrons and he's considered by many the national composer of Ireland. So this is Blind Mary by Turlock O'Carolan, played on my sea whistle. This is a Michael Burke whistle. enjoyed learning a little bit about Irish and Scottish music. There are many opportunities to hear this music, especially when we're back to normal again. For example, for Scottish music you can go to the Scottish Highland Games. They take place all over the country, all over the world, but there are many here in California and that's a wonderful way to experience Scottish culture and music and even the heavy sports where, where big burly kilted men toss around trees and stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and, um, and then as far as Irish music goes, there are sashoons around town and um, they take place in various restaurants and pubs and you get to experience firsthand some of the best Irish musicians in the country playing wonderful tunes in this spontaneous way. There's a word in Ireland, in Irish, in the Irish language, called crack, C-R-A-I-C. And it just means the kind of fun and entertainment and joy and togetherness that that kind of tradition brings to people. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, and on behalf of the Los Angeles Symphonic Winds, thank you very much, and please stay safe.